Hi, Andrew Cuneo here with another run through the standard metagame challenge. This time I'm going to use Mono Red. This is a deck that I made a video on right when Crimson Vow came out. And I haven't changed it very much since then. Um, I think compared to the video I made, I've got slightly different two drops. I've got some Dragonkin Berserkers instead of the Volatile Visionary. I, I think either one of those is really fine. It, it, you're just looking for something to play on to the, turn two that can attack. And they have upside in a couple different spots. The reason I made the switch was I just didn't want to have a ton of one toughness creatures in my deck with the popularity of Spike Field Hazard. Then the sideboard, I think I have one more volatile arsonist than in that video. And I have a another copy of Frostbite in place of End the Festivities. I think Frostbite, they, the Frostbites are mostly for going up against White Weenie, and I wanted the card that could kill higher toughness creatures, because I think the easiest way to lose is you just have a Luminarch Aspirant that gets out of control. So I just wanted my the cards I was boarding in in that matchup, I want to be able to kill Luminarch Aspirant reliably. So that's the deck. I'm going to jump into the metagame challenge, and we'll see how it performs. On the play, always great. This looks like a pretty typical start for this deck. I'm just going to play some cheap creatures and start attacking. What if the white decks don't play the Cave of the Frost Dragon? Hmm. So this thing does have first strike, so I can trade. I think I'm willing to trade. Then I'll get to play two spells, including a Gatekeeper on creatures, if they let me. Okay. They didn't want to trade. So the Gatekeeper is going to come down just as two on first strike. Got a choice here. I can either attack with the Gatekeeper and the Faceless Haven, or I can kill the Thalia and attack with my three ground creatures. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I want to make sure that my mana gets spent developing the board this turn. All right. It's kind of a trade by the opponent, but my 2-1 died and I got a 2-2. Two -two. They have to expect that this thing's eventually going to die. Also, all right, they want to play the Brutal Cathar. Oh, but they're not exiling the token. That seems like a mistake. Let's see what Reckless Impulse has to offer. Nothing good. You don't often use the sacrifice ability of the, Pal of the Falcon Wrath Pit Fighter. But it's nice when it comes up. Another Thalia. This seems like a pretty big mistake to play a 2 1 first strike and then immediately trade a creature with the. Charger, but I'll take advantage of their mistake. So here I have the option of sacking the P 
Pit Fighter. I don't think I'm going to do that. Faceless Haven's a pretty useful card. Access to seven mana. Tier doesn't really do a ton here. I guess I'll still just attack with it. That was a pretty big misstep by the opponent. If they had not blocked with the Brutal Cathar, I probably would have sacked the Pit Fighter just to see if I could find a spell to cast, because if the Cathar changes into the Moon Rage Brute, it kind of shuts down my whole board. All right, so in this matchup, I'm going to want to sideboard a lot. The Frostbites are in my deck basically only for this matchup, so I certainly want those. I think I want to board in the Arsonists as well. And the Moonvale Regents. And I've just boarded in a bunch of expensive cards, so I'm going to take out all my Puppeteers. Uh, what else don't I want? The Wolf Rider is really mediocre. Gatekeepers also are not at their best here. I think I'd rather just have another removal spell. Actually, the Wolf Rider is probably better than the Pit Fighter. Let's just have the Wolf Rider and yet another Thundering Rebuke. Thundering Rebuke can kill Adeline, which is one of the scariest cards their deck can play. That's a pretty nice... One drop, but I'm going to wait and see. Uh, do I want to kill the Initiate or do I want to kill Thalia? I think I want to kill the Initiate. Because my next turn I'm going to have to play the Dragonkin Berserker. So the Initiate would definitely get a counter. I suppose I, I could have instead just chosen to use my second turn to play with Fire of the Thalia. But that just uses my mana worse. So I don't see a point in doing that. Get a nice defensive storm seeker in here. If they have another one of these things in their hand, it could get ugly for me. I guess I'm going to play just this. Not like to discard my hand. I think I'm not going to attack either. So if they have two spells and they can send both of these things down. Okay, that doesn't do anything. I don't, oh, okay. It, it does do something because they're... That's, it's one of their two spells. That makes sense. Definitely going to want the Moonvale Regent back.
I'll take that action. That's two cards I've gotten off the Moonveil region so far, and this will be third, fourth. Probably should have been more careful and tapped Faceless Haven for Colorless at some point. Match number two. Hmm. This is five, two, five lands, two spells, but this is a thing that helps me with flooding. And one of my lands is a faceless save in. I'm going to keep this and hope to draw. If, if I can draw like two spells in my first three draw steps, I think this will wind up being a pretty good hand. If I draw two or three lands in my first three draw steps, it's going to be pretty bad. This is a spell, but it's one of the worst possible cards to draw. Because this is, I already have this as sort of a turn four play, and this is like a second turn four play. So I'll just deal damage. Well, wow. that's not the spell I really wanted to see there. This is all three copies of this card that's that are in my main deck. This is probably some sort of Hullbreaker Horror Leer deck. It's an unusual color combination for that, but I would assume that that I mean they already they've milled the Leer. They probably also have Hullbreaker Horror in their deck. Then I guess some black removal spells. Green. It's contributing mulch. I don't know if it's contributing anything else. Guess I should start firing these off. Okay. This is they gain life when they play lands, and they can play multiple lands a turn now. Not bad for them, I suppose. We can make a giant guy. Is that going to be their play? Meat Hook Massacre. That's pretty good. I'll take negative two. You don't actually gain life. It would be fun if you did.
think they're just trying to figure out what land they want to be big with druid class. Some respectably sized land. They're coming after me. I guess I'm just going to give up on the Cemetery Gatekeeper. This thing does so much damage this turn. I can actually kill this land next turn with Shatter Soul Smashing if I want. Might not be the best use of my turn. We'll have to see. Back up Druid class. So if they sink all their mana into a layer of the Hydra, they can have a 4-4 blocker. Guess this can be a five five. So no attack for me this turn. Do I wanna do a point or do I wanna make a three two? I think I'll just do a point of damage. I might want to attack with everything next turn, so I'll go ahead and play this. You're going to gain a lot of life from doing this. A Tainted Adversary in their deck as well. A second Druid class. Up to 13. I'm not sure they were actually dead on board. They might not have understood how the Puppeteer worked. So this is a pretty weird deck I'm playing against. I think I want the Arsonist just because I want the additional haste thing that's hard to block. And... I don't think I want Fireblade Charger at all. I don't think I want Play With Fire at all. 
I do think I want Thundering Rebuke because they played the they showed me that they have Leer in their deck and that they have Tainted Adversary in their deck. I think I want another Reckless Impulse. I still have one Moonvale Regent in my deck, and I think I want Shatter Skull Smashing in my deck because I just boarded in three five drops. A little bit light on lands, but got two two drops, and I have Reckless Impulse, which maybe I'll wind up playing on turn three if I haven't found a land yet. So it begins with the life gaining. This is a pretty weak card, but it is real. If you're going to put it in your deck, you certainly want to have it in play on turn two because that's when it's going to be at its best. They didn't use it. That means that they have divide by zero in their hand. Basically, definitely. Uh, I definitely want to play something because if I don't play anything, they're just going to divide by zero. The flame, they're the dragon can berserker. Maybe this wasn't. Maybe I should have played the gatekeeper instead. It just didn't play divide by zero. Probably they had Meat Hook Massacre. Yeah. I'd be better off if I had the one drop in my hand and not the two drop. That was a mistake on my part. Well, that's not good. They can divide by zero their Meat Hook Massacre too, so... This is probably not a winnable game at this point. I really don't like playing with cards that rely on you to make your land drops in the same deck that you're playing with a non-land mana source. I just don't think it makes any sense. Let's move on. Their deck has mulch in it, and it has druid class, so I think that anything that you're getting mana from really should just be a land. That's a terrible hand. This is an okay-ish hand. not just going to play this to deal three damage right now they could potentially play a creature that is a blocker also the game could easily last until i get seven mana their deck is certainly not fast It better have something here. This is way too much damage to just take it.
They have Infernal Grasp. They're going to go to 8 and then take 7 and go to 1. Power Word Kill. Okay, so they're going to be at 3. But Meat Hook Massacre isn't big enough to kill the Slasher. So I think they're just in the spot where they're guaranteed to die to a Royal Eruption. So I need two spells just to answer my creatures, and then they're not going to have enough mana to live through Royal Eruption. This is not an insane hand, but it's fine. If I draw a land, it's a good draw because of the four drops. If I draw spells, as long as they're not my other two four drops in my deck, it'll be fine. This appears to be a white weenie deck, so Play With Fire was an incredible top deck. Getting a Gatekeeper on Creature, if you're a little bit ahead in this matchup, is really, really strong. I'm just going to Royal Eruption this and save the play with fire in my hand because it's an instant, so I can potentially play it on whatever they do on their turn. Which is a little bit hard to see what... I mean, they didn't have a 3-mana creature in their hand because you would think they would have played a 3-mana creature if they had it. I guess they had Fateful Absence was one of the cards. I don't know. It's hard to say what other spells they must have in their hand, because it's not a one mana card. It's not a three mana card, because I think all the three mana cards you would have played over the Clarion Spirit there. Maybe it was a the Sun Gold Sentinel. Maybe that's the card they, they wanted to hold. Maybe it makes a little sense. And there you see the benefit of having held the play with fire instead of the royal eruption because I get to play two spells in a turn. I'm gonna have three lethal attackers next turn with the faithless with the faceless haven. Alright. That's a way to put up a fight. So this is the same matchup I played earlier. I like Frostbite, I like Shatter Skull Smashing, I like the Arsonist, the Moonvale Regent, the Thundering Rebuke. I don't remember if I boarded in the final Reckless Impulse. I think you want a little bit of Reckless Impulse type stuff in this matchup, but too much is not good. What else was I cutting?
think I boarded like that. Maybe I should take one of the burning hands out of my sideboard for another frostbite. I'd like to be able to board in another one mana card if I'm going to take out all of the two ones in this matchup. And I think that this deck is not very good if you're expecting to play against mono green very much. So it's not even really worth necessarily having four sideboard cards for that matchup. I'm not even sure it's going to help you that much. Uh, they played their cards in the wrong order. They could have had a counter on the Monk of the Open Hand if they just played it first. This is a problematic card. I don't have any abrades in my sideboard. So if they had, had gotten the counter they should have gotten, I would be at one less life, and I would have been forced to play my Thundering Rebuke there over the Royal Eruption, which there may or may not matter. Hmm. It's a bit of a problem because now the aspirant's going to just get out of control once they put the mall on it. Needed to draw a land or a better spell than the arsonist that turn. Land is a fine draw this turn. That is not a very good draw. Guess I should cycle that. If I'd been able to play the Arsonist that turn, and then this turn I'd been able to uh, kick the adversary on a Thundering Rebuke, and they had not drawn a spell, which they didn't, actually I would have been able to kill the Luminarch Aspirin. I think now I'm probably just dead. Certainly I'm dead with a land. Well, the Skyclaves can be a really good card at times. All right, I get to be on the play. That is excellent. This is a great hand, assuming that I don't miss my third land drop for too long. I wasn't going to kill basically anything they were going to play that turn. I'm just going to go ahead and kill this. I don't want them putting a maul on it and having it be a 5 5. Or just playing like an Adeline and making it a 5 toughness creature. Or even just playing anything and putting the counter not on the Aspirant. Because I'm going to have to kill the Aspirant 
next turn if I don't kill it that turn. I'm just going to play this as a land. Makes the adversary way better. I'm really not a fan of Fateful Absence in this deck. I think a couple of Valorous stances, especially in the sideboard, makes sense, but this card is just so mediocre in the games where your opponent's killing your creatures. And I think that's the way almost all sideboard games are going to go for the white deck, is that people are, will have boarded into stuff that just kills opposing creatures. I'm going to assume they're going to trade, given that I just revealed that I have two removal spells. It's one of those things where, by attacking, you give the opportunity to the opponent to make what is probably a mistake. All right. It's at least a good... It's good for the opponent that they've made this thing cost so much I'm probably not going to be able to get a second spell out of it. It is kind of bad for them that the creatures are all going to die. They must have the mall in their hand if they're just this reluctant to trade. They're just taking a ton of free damage. Now if I draw a land, I will actually get to use the adversary. Ooh. And another fateful absence, but that makes it very likely I'm just going to have a land. Not a land. Pretty good card, though. Ace this guy on over. I don't want this game to drag out too much longer. Because they have an Aspirin I haven't been able to get off the board. And they also have two Faceless Havens. And I don't have any creature lands. Of course, if I draw one more land next turn, do I have a Thundering Rebuke down here? I do. So the Aspirant's still in range of just dying as soon as I draw a land. Hmm. Guess they're really scared that next turn I would be able to attack and make a dragon, which probably they wouldn't be able to beat.
good card. I think I really want to give them the option of trading with the arsonist this turn. I'll trade the Stormseeker with the adversary if they decide to attack with the adversary. That is a big boy. I think this probably kills them. Arsonist is a really powerful card. Lots of two drops. Up against white again. A bit of a scary start. It's going to set up a first striking line of defense, see what happens. The adversaries don't really do anything playing them as a 2 2. Kind of. I need to find a card that can kill the Aspirant before I can really start doing much of anything. Could also just jam with my Berserker next turn. by time. This play gets kind of obliterated if they have a Brutal Cathar, but I don't think I can beat them having a Brutal Cathar. Not a Brutal Cathar, but the same thing. All right. That is what happens when you don't draw any cards that kill Luminarch Aspirant. And that is why I board in so many cards that do. Same way I've sideboarded every round against white. I don't mind keeping a hand like this. 
even on the play in this matchup. I've got removal spells for the first two creatures. And if I draw a land, I'll have a removal spell for the third creature. And I'll also have Reckless Impulse to help me find my third and fourth lands. If the top three cards of my deck have zero land, I could be in trouble. But that's pretty unlikely to happen. I'm not going to just play with Fire Them to make sure I make a land drop. The whole reason to keep a hand like this is because it, it doesn't really matter that much if you make your land drops. Because you're just going to be able to trade with their cards anyway. As long as they don't have a second Adeline this turn, I think I'm in great shape. Well, Legion Angel is not a second Adeline, but it is a very problematic card for them to have. This may be beatable. I do have a very good four drop of my own. All right, that's a problem. I now really need to draw a way to kill this Brutal Cathar. That is not a way to kill the Brutal Cathar. Gonna get to make a wolf token. That's pretty awesome. Very happy that they traded there. I think they maybe didn't realize I'm just going to make a wolf. Valkymira. Okay, that doesn't do anything. Oh man, they they only had one Legion Angel in their main deck and they drew it. That is brutal for me. Really brutal.
I have to be a really strong draw this turn. Like Reckless Impulse into a card that kills the Cathar plus another spell. I didn't draw any of those things. All right. Well, that was my run with Mono Red. Not my most successful run, but not awful either. I think in general, this deck is favored against white, but you're not going to beat it every time. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please sub if you've been enjoying the videos, and I'll see you next time.